Welcome to the Wine and Friends project. This is a faux chalkboard lesson. Um, I've used a little stencil and then we've got a two-piece overlay um, wine bottle that you just glue together and hang on your wall. And this makes a, would make a lovely gift for somebody that enjoys wine or your good friends that you enjoy wine with. So I hope you enjoy the lesson. A lot of dry brushing and dry rubbing and our faux chalk lesson. All right, I'm going to show you how to do this faded technique right here. So what we're doing is we baste our um, bottle with mistletoe green, which is very obnoxious green, and then we want to make it look like a bottle. So the process that I used, I used the um, big um, dome brushes, and I'm going to show you over here on this top piece. But this piece shows through um, to the underneath piece, so that gives it the look of a bottle being down here, and then I'm going to make this be bottle colored on the edges there so it looks like it's part of the bottle. Anyway, so um, after I base coated, then I used my pistachio mint and dry rubbed really big in this area because this is where the band goes, so I didn't need it there. And then I did the same thing with the black green all around the edges with a final float, okay? And I'm going to show you this over here. I just want to show you like on the bigger piece. And then I used this matte medium, which is magical stuff. Um, it dries clear, but it stays kind of open for a little bit. And I used my um, Thala Green Blue, and I did a glaze over the whole thing. And you'll see the colors will change from kind of obnoxious to this kind of neat bottle um, color. Okay, so to walk that out, I've got this great big long little neck here. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to make sure we're doing our highlights on the same side, because that's going to be our light source. So I'm dry rubbing. That means I'm going to rub all the stuff, all the paint off. Um, and then this is my rim, and then this is my cork. So we don't need to go all the way up to the top. So I'm going to go. Keep it over on the one-third or the, the side of things. And when you're doing this, you want to fade it one direction and fade it the other, and then you'll pick up a little more and make it shiny mostly in the middle. So you'll kind of stay in one spot there. Okay, and you can repeat again. Okay, and so that gives us our bottle shine. And I guess I need to go ahead, I'll just go ahead and bring this down here as well. We'll bend that right around the corner there. And that's going to, when I layer it up, the theory being is that that will flow into that right there. Okay. And then a way to clean your brushes so that you don't have them wet forever is to use hand sanitizer on them. Now I find this uses a lot of paper towels and I'm not sure I'm a fan of doing that, um, but I just want to share um, how to do it. So use hand sanitizer and work it off over here and then dry your brush off over here. And you can see that my brushes have not been getting very clean because that is loosening a lot of other colors. That's kind of totally funny. So, I'm not going to worry about that because it'll dry and then those colors will be kind of in there just like they were for this experiment here. So I'll let that sit over here and let it dry. Um, the alcohol, the rubbing alcohol in the hand sanitizer evaporates really fast. That's why that works quickly. Alright, so now we're going to go black green. And I'm going to go on the edge. And just draw that in. Okay, and we'll repeat on the other side. This brush might be a little bit overkill, but I'll just tip it kind of outwards. By manipulating your brush, sometimes you can really um, make a big brush into a smaller brush, and vice versa. Okay, so I get that, draw it in. And you can see we're getting our form this way. And then I think what we'll go ahead and do 
is we'll go ahead and continue this um, dry rubbing technique all the way down the green of the bottle so that our colors match the underneath and they'll in theory blend. Okay, so wherever that green is poking out We'll go ahead and repeat the same technique for, oops, for the um, little bin here. Okay, I don't have enough paint rubbed off. If you start having your paint come off really strongly, it's time to um, stop and re rethink. I'm going to use my Ghost Writer. Um, it has a chalk. It has a ceramic lead in the tip and a gray. Um, graphite lead to sketch on. Just a little bit of a curve. Now that's going to have a slight roundedness to it, so we're not going to want the same amount of highlight all the way across. time barely wiping off and that's going to be our stronger and then we'll go in here as well with a little bit of strong okay then we'll switch brushes and we'll do the black green up there Switch to a short bright and we'll float with the black green. And we need to float under our bottle as well. And my water is. When you begin floating for the day, make sure you soak your brush for just a few minutes. It helps wake the fibers up and they hold on to that water better. Okay, so now that looks like it's it's got some shape. Um, I need a bigger brush to float, so I'm going to use this guy. And I am going to go ahead and just let it sit out with some water in it for a minute. I'll be right back. Okay, so we're going to float with our black green. I'll blot my brush just a little bit more. If it's making a puddle over here on your palette, it's probably going to make a puddle on your project. So you want to get it how you want it over here. And then what we'll do is we'll just give that a nice finishing edge float. Flip it around, do the same thing over here, same thing over here, and then we'll come over here and we'll do the same, same thing. Okay, now it's time to go ahead and bottle our bottle up. I've got this media, uh, matte medium is very very kind of thick okay so it's not drippy and it's really white and that makes you wonder if you were going to be having a little bit of problem here with it covering but this has already had it on there and you can see that um, that wasn't an issue so I'm going to mix some and pull in some of my phthalo blue green and I want it sheer so I don't want it to be all phthalo blue green and then I'm just going to go ahead and basically I'm glazing right over the top and I just want a smooth application and that transforms us into a, a nice lumblier um, blue-green bottle versus just a green-green-green-green bottle. And 
just finish this. And it also gives us a little teeny bit of shine, not very much, but a little bit. Okay, now I want to go ahead and use a little bit more of my pistachio mint and get this highlight just a little less tealy green. Oops, get you on camera. Just a teeny bit and a little higher highlight. Alright, so we're going to use deep burgundy and we're going to dry rub the middle of all these grapes. Okay. And we're going to need some especially thick paper towels. And we'll just dry rub in a little circle. And this isn't going to show tremendously, but it's going to make it seem a lot less red or a lot less purple and give it kind of that luminescent under story. Okay, and so I'm going to do that to all of the different grapes. All right, now we're going to repeat with Country Red. I'm just doing this dirty brush. If you get some on your leaf, don't worry about that, because you can just base coat right over it. The back one isn't going to get any more color than that back grape because it's back there down on the shadows. Okay, so just go through. This goes pretty darn fast and now that I'm just doing more accent colors I don't have to take the time to um, load my brush for every grape. Alright, now we'll go into Terra Coral. And that's going to be our next, woohoo, hi, 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 hi. I'm going to switch to a smaller brush. And rub a little bit more. So this is going to be our highlights. So I'm going to highlight towards the top. And you can see that our grapes start taking shape. And you know what? This, so if I'm doing this dirty brush, these colors are sitting on top just a little bit. I'm going to mix a little bit of the red in my brush and then continue. It really makes a difference when you have just a touch of another color in there. And I've got some kind of cheap paper towel going here, but um, what you want to do is don't use cheap ones that give you, um, I've got to get this piece of schmutz off there, don't use cheap paper towels because they give you little lint balls on the ends of your brush when you're dry rubbing. So either like Viva or um, Blue Shop towels work really well. And I'm getting all kinds of lint balls. Dry rubbing is such a fast, fun way to build a grape. Okay, now we're going to hop up to Coral Shell and we're establishing the highlights. And now I'm not going to make it so round, it's going to be more like a C. Okay, and then we are going to glaze these so um, that'll kind of cinch that down just a little bit so I can afford to go just a little bit brighter. I normally would. Okay. Looking good. Okay, so now we go into butterscotch. And butterscotch is just going to be a little light top sparkle. Alright, we're going to do a little bit of shading with soft black using my short bright brush and I'm just going to go in where the grapes are under each other and lift them out just a little bit.
All right, so we're going to use dioxazine purple in the media paints, um, primary magenta, and cad red hue. And we're going to use them together or separately, depending on which look you're going for. I'm kind of mixing the cad red and the primary magenta together. And those are going to be glazed over my top, my topmost grapes. And then the dioxazine is going to go on the behind grapes after and I get done glazing them with the other color. So I'm going to glaze them and then glaze them again. So I'll go there and just kind of maybe deepen edges of things. Yeah, I like that as a almost a float color. Walk it in just a little bit. All right, and there we have some lovely grapes. All right, I'm going to mix um, butterscotch with coral shell. Just one to one on my brush, and I'm going to readdress my highlights because now my highlights are a funny color, and maybe just a little too bright there. We don't want them screaming, so if you're squinting at them, it needs to be kind of restful and not like, "Hey, I'm a highlight." Up there, so this guy could use just a little pop. It disappeared completely. Then we'll go back with coral shell by itself and just add a very kind of strong highlight within that highlight. Okay, I wanted to share, this is a little bit hard to share on camera, but this is a um, project paint organizer. It's got a shelf up here, whoops, hi, for your mediums, and then it's got these little slanted shelves for your paints to go in, and it'll hold a whole, um, a whole selection of, like a whole project's worth of paints. Then on the sides, there are slots for sanding discs and things like that. And on this side, there is a place for your brushes that you've used. And what I like about this is I can push this off to the end and it keeps everything organized and I'm not knocking my paint bottles over. Um, I've got to get it painted. I think it's going to be adorable when I get it painted. But um, just a handy little tool to have and it was made and designed especially for, um, for me actually. But um, I thought I designed it or had it designed so that it would work for you as well. All right, I'm using celery green, and I want to just dry rub down the middle of these tendrils. I'm using the um, Mezzaluna brush. The Mezzaluna replaced the Crescent. All right, I switched to my nice big um, round stroke brush and I'm just dry brushing, which means I'm just going to just lay down just enough scratchy paint to give it a, a little moment there. It's much easier to control. Okay, and that's just going to brighten this up just a little bit. Oops, hi. That's called base coating. Dry brushing should have scratchy, dry looking paint not um, solid base coat looking paint. And just use lighter pressure and that will help you. All right, so I'm going to dry brush with lemonade and you could almost skip the celery step and then we're gonna glaze on top with um, whatever color I figure out. Make sure that you're shape following and pretty lines this is about it. We're going to glaze and then these um, in shade a little bit and they're going to be done. So whatever you see is going to be what you get. So see how that's really stripy? I want to spread that out just a little bit. don't want it stripy. And so I'll flatten my brush out just a little to get it scratchier. You don't want it base coated and you don't want it stripy. And you do want it up in the middle. You don't want it too stripy because that'll make it look like it's shiny and vines aren't going to be super shiny. So next what we'll do is we'll take our flat, our um, short bright flat, and we'll get into some black green and where these Oops, hi, it's not a very good float. Where these cross over, 
you're going to want to shade them. Okay, so all the crosses. All right, we're going to take and wash with plantation pine over our stems. We want it washy, otherwise you're going to be base coating. I thought I would be using a media acrylic, but those turned out way too yellow. And as it turns out, um, plantation pine is a very transparent color. Okay, so just wash over the tops. Now it's going to brighten everybody up and sync it together. dry rub the leaf centers of planta <laughs> plantation pine. I'll float to get next to the middle of that one. Okay, and that's just going to give us a little bit of depth. if needed. Be careful of your fingers on these edges. I just kind of ripped that up against my hand. They're a little bit pointy. Okay, and so we're going to go into a little bit of black green. This dirty brush. And we're going to deepen. Oh, hi. Not so much. So soft pressure and don't take it out very far. Okay. All right, I'm going to float next to the edge of my leaves. And you want to make it not look like there's little like jig jag floats. So you got to kind of wash uh, you got to Come back and smooth it like you're walking your float out. Round it out just a little bit. Okay, and then we'll go in and we'll wash, um, we'll dry rub next to the edge as well. All right, we're going to get out more black green. And mine is all dried up. And almost empty as well. And we're going to shade where the leaves um, meet things. So, for example, this leaf is underneath this leaf. So I'm going to go ahead and just shade that. Shade that. And that way it gives us dimension. And up here we'll come right along this edge. All right, we're going to shade with black green where the bottle is underneath the leaf. So we want that to be nice and lifted up. So by shading underneath the leaf and highlighting on that edge, it will lift the illusion of lifting the leaf off of the bottle. a shadow this way as well. Okay. And I missed this little guy up here on both sides. All right, we're going to go into celery green and where we have edges for our leaves, we're going to dry rub the highlights, which is much easier than floating on it, especially on little edges like this. Can 
maybe just a touch some places and then deeper on others. And on these edges over here where we already floated, we can go in and scumble to bring that float inward a little bit. And that will make it look a lot less stripy. Yeah. Okay, same thing. To our limeade and then what we'll do is just touch and let's see we'll start down here touch and kiss where we want there to be just a little bit brighter highlight I'll go ahead and dry rub near my edge over there just do the two top edges and I think that'll be good I'm give this guy just a little bit of something going on back there okay and then we'll repeat up here float to um, sink that color near the edge and that will also brighten that color up. And we want to be careful that it doesn't look too white. Um, it's going to read really bright. So I just want to be real careful that I'm almost more glazing than anything. So I come over here. Too much water. Making a pool. Raising it over. Okay. Yeah, I think that'll be enough. All right, we're going to float with just a little bit of colonial blue just on some of these edges of the grapes. And that's going to make everything look a little bit like it's got that um, cloudy um, oh, I don't know what it's called. I do know what it's called. I can't think of the word right now. And so we just want that to be just a little bit. Bring that in towards our highlight. I don't like this um, halo thing I'm getting right now. All right, we're going to do that from the bottom. That was definitely making my, my mind crazy there. Okay. Okay, we'll repeat up here. Just a little hint of it. All right, we're going to go into our black green and we're going to have some watery paint. And I'm using my Raphael liner, and that's how we're going to bring in the tendrils. Just a little bit. And repeat on the other leaves. Okay, on the cork, we're going to use some, we've got it based with cocoa. We're going to use some burnt umber to shade it. Just a little bit of foreshortening there, so. And then we'll just go in and dabble just a little bit. 
the burnt umber just to give it some cork like little tendency. All right. All right, I've got my stencil and it says wine pairs nicely with good friends. I'm going to I'm going to do a fake chalk effect. I'm using gray sky and I'm going to dry rub. So I'm going to make sure that my brush is really nice and dry. Okay. Not minty. And then instead of tap 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 tap, I'm going to rub 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 rub. And what this does is it gives it a really nice dusty looking chalky kind of effect um, without having to spray and do some stuff like that. So sometimes you have to have the chalk. Sometimes you can just shortcut. So this time I'm shortcut. So I'll just continue and let me take a little sneak peek there, see how that looks. And I can go back if I don't think it's dark enough, and I can strengthen it. And I'll go do this edge piece so that you can see. So it looks like chalk. Okay, now I've got the lettering done, and I think I'm going to go and do a little bit of dressing up. With just a round brush and do like almost like a little bit of drop shading and see what we think about that. Don't get shaky. little bit stronger might be okay. And I'm almost wondering if I need to sneak into a little bit of white. Okay, we've got just a little bit of white mixed into my gray. And I think I can see that much better. Okay, and so that'll just Anchor my words just a teeny bit. You know, I think I'm going to go to pure white. I'm not quite getting the razzle-dazzle that I'm wanting, and so I think it needs to go to white. Okay, and then we'll come down here and we'll do friends and we'll see how much of this needs to get drop shadowed. Don't like that. All right, so we're going to glaze just a little bit of our red. We've got some deep burgundy into our leaves, just kind of over to one side or the other, if I can get any color over there. And so, whoop. That just gives them a little bit of color carrying around. Bring a little bit up into our cork and maybe even a little bit up into our bottle. Okay. Okay, on the 
obsessing now. All right, I'm going to go ahead and mix. Um, where I'm actually going to coat this with my matte medium. Get it kind of wet. There's even strokes. something to hang on to. I think my bottle's just a little bit bright. So once I get that on, then I'm going to take my my um, phthalo and a little bit of, ooh, yeah, that's a little bit too much. Phthalo and a touch of black and media. And a little bit more. And a little bit more. And just bring that down out of the stratosphere just a little bit. It's nice big strokes. Okay. I think that works and I'll just let that dry. All right, now I'm going to take the sap green uh, media paint and I'm going to glaze just a little bit on these leaves just to bring them in and make them belong. I love the media paints because they don't base coat, so you're getting just a pure sheer glaze. And so everything that you do underneath still is there, it's just getting tinted. So it just makes happy families. Okay, and I think we'll come up and we'll bring this out from, from here. And just glaze a little bit. down here too. So it still stays bright, it just gets a little bit greener. And we'll do the same over yonder. Paper is shredding. Okay. 